in this episode of The Art of Making, How the Horse Harness is Made. Tar is a musical instrument of Azerbaijan. How long does it take to make it? National motives in the fashion collections of modern designers. Stylish, fashionable, and beautiful. The craft of Sekian Nurgaliev is very honorable. It's a rare and a complicated one. Sikien is a master at making horse harness. We came by to his workshop to see with our own eyes how the horse harness is made. The craft that I do, making saddles, is applied art. Formation times, Kazakhs made a saddle, mainly of wood. More often, they used willow, birch, or elm trees. The set of a horse harness includes tokum, or saddle blanket, jildik, or saddle cloth, shugin, a brittle, omeldruk, a breast collar, kuisran, crapper, tartpa, belly bands, and uzinge, stirrups. These are the parts that make up the saddle. On average, it takes about two months to make it. The saddle tree consists of two side wings, central, rear, and front parts, as well as a ridge. When assembling, a lot depends on wood. For example, a saddle that is a seat is made of two parts of wood, but it's possible to make it from one whole wood. The slumbo part also consists of two wooden parts, the front part of two halves. In order to make a stable saddle, its inside part is covered with leather, which is made in advance. It is soaked in a salt solution for a few days, dried, and then it is stretched on the saddle. It should be noted that there should be no air between the wooden base and the leather during the stretching. After drying of the inner part, the wooden base is completely covered with solid and dense leather. Kazakhs have several types of saddles. They differ depending on the tribal belonging of a person. For example, Quran de Yer, the saddle of the Middle Jews, had high toppers, a vertical front, and a steeply curved back part. Original ornaments and precious stones were used in the decoration. The region of use of a saddle Quran de Yer Southeastern Kazakhstan. Manayir, uh, uh, this saddle belongs to the junior Jews. In Kazakh, it is called Kozukurugu or Adayira. Atalat. Niyegizu. Kazakhta, Kazakhtarda, bizde. In general, Kazakhs have five types of saddles, which bear names Naiman, Arghun, Qurandı, Aday, and Kiri.
This is Naiman Yira. The main difference of the saddles that both its front and back cannel are of oval shape. The saddle of Kire Yira is similar to this one, but the front and back parts are much higher and bigger. There is a smell of leather and wood in the workshop. There are tools everywhere, templates, parts of saddles, and threads. It becomes clear from the first sight. People who work here love their job. But now we will return to the process of making a saddle. Now the saddle is covered with leather. Finished and cut leather must be tightly stretched onto the saddle tree. For this purpose, it's slightly washed and nailed to the wooden base. Only after drying, the leather looks smooth and beautiful. When I worked on the saddle, I used two colors of leather, black and brown. For comfort and softness, the inner part of the seat is covered with felt. And then, mixing two colors of leather, we finish the outer surface. The rest parts of the saddle are made in a similar way, but without a frame using fillers such as felt and wool. The saddle cloth covered with leather and felt is placed under the saddle. Once it is decorated, we insert the belt and the load is secured. Thanks to its design, saddle cloth is placed on the croup of the horse to protect the animal's spinal cord. A good saddle must not cause inconvenience to the animal, must not cause pain to the animal's back, and besides, a person should feel comfortable too. The next step is followed by the decoration of the saddle with silver or gold metal plates of different forms. The technique is very similar to jewelry. It includes forging, applied ornaments, engraving, incrustation with stones, bones, and so on. Now I will make metal blanks for casting. I will cut a plate using a scroll saw with a thickness of one millimeter. Lower part of blank is thicker. It'll look like that. And then I will attach them with nails. Only after that I will send them to casting. After grinding, the patterns will be placed on different parts of the saddle. The master makes everything by hand, stitches leather on stirrup with threads, he decorates with ornament everything starting from the halter to the belly band and stirrups.
the ornament which decorates the saddle tree and forms a complex composition comes to life. It stands out on the dark leather. All this imbues the saddle with nobility and grace. Tar is one of the oldest musical instruments in Azerbaijan. It is also known in Iran and in some regions of Turkey. The first samples of tar in history were made by the peoples of Turkestan. At first, there was a so-called sheshtar, which means tar with six strings. Iran uses panch tar, which consists of five strings, and Azerbaijani tar has 11 strings. The tar is manufactured manually. This is a complicated and long process. Today, all masters who engage in this craft seek to pass on to the next generation the principles and rules for the manufacturing of tar established many centuries ago. If you break at least one of them, it will necessarily affect the sound of the tar and lead to a disorder of harmony. Currently, there are not many people in Azerbaijan involved in the manufacturing of tar. They're mostly older people. But Zahid Valadov is one of the youngest masters of this craft. He adopted the skills from his father, a famous performer and master in Sheki, Mahir Valadov. Since childhood, he has grown up to the sounds of tar, so this instrument is very dear to his heart. Since childhood, I have been seeing my father making different musical instruments. I watched him and then I repeated and made myself souvenir samples. It was training for me. After the death of my father, the workshop remained closed for a long time. I completed my studies in Turkey and decided to come to my hometown of Sheki. And so I started to continue this craft. Tar consists of three main parts, body, neck, and headstock. The length of the tar, 85 centimeters. The height of the body is 16 centimeters. The width, 18 and a half centimeters. 22 frets are imposed on the neck. A film of bull heart is pulled on the double bell shaped body. There are 11 strings of different diameter on the tar. You can play it with a misrap that is made of ebonite or bone. The tar's body is made of mulberry tree. Sometimes we buy materials and sometimes someone gives it to us when they cut down a tree in their yard. In this sense, there is no shortage in the material. First of all, the tree is cut in the shape of a square, then we draw a sketch on it. The tar's body is being grounded. This work needs to be done gradually, because the tree must dry gradually, so that it does not crack or break. If there is a little crack, you won't be able to make a tar out of it. We grind bowls that differ in size. This place is where the bowls connect, we grind manually with these tools. Sometimes it takes three, four months to make one tar. It also depends on how fast the mulberry tree dries. Sometimes it can be delayed up to five months. Therefore, we often work on ten instruments at once. The main thing is that the body is ready, then it takes 10-15 days to make the instrument as a whole. I would mark one thing. When the neck is prepared, it's necessary to choose a relatively dry tree. Because new, wet tree after grinding and drying begins to deform. It doesn't happen in the body, because it's made of a dense wood. So we grind it gradually, and accordingly it dries gradually too. Sahid is currently working on small instruments. They are intended for children who go to musical school. Every year he makes several instruments for them. This pleases the master. As long as there is interest in national music, his craft will also live. Tar designed for children's music schools. It has a small size. Considering that it will be played by children aged 9 to 10, I make sure the instrument is light and convenient. So I cut out a small body and grind it more so it's not heavy 
and children can hold it on their chest. After the body is ready, a neck is attached to it. It must be strong, so it's made of nut wood. A pack head is first attached to the cut neck. These pack head scabs are filled with small wooden pieces. The neck is then attached to the body. After that, it is refined and grinded. A film of bovine heart is pulled on the balls. We take it from the butchers and dry it ourselves. Sometimes we buy it in a musical instrument stores. Not everyone can pull the film on the body. It's one of the hardest parts of making the tar. Many can make parts of the instrument, but to pull the film, it's not enough just to be skilled in it. You need musical knowledge here. I am a tar teacher myself, so I know the subtleties. Then legs are fastened on the neck. These figures on the head of the tar are called ashuks, that is, pegs. There are nine ashuks on the head of the tar, to which strings are attached. The tar has eleven strings, but nine ashuks. This is because the two ringing strings are attached to one ashuk. Neck grinding is done until we get the expected result. It has to be elegant. See, this body hole is thick to the neck and this part is grinded too. And this is where the leads are fastened. Plastic parts are attached to this part, because lead slips better on plastics. On the wooden surface, the leads do not move well. Cling on the surface of the plastic is slippery, so it's more convenient. After we fasten leads on the neck, we put them in an approximate place, moving on it. Adjustment of their places is carried out after attachment of strings. So we establish the tune of each note and the exact location of the lead. Easy movement of the lead on the neck is so important. A master who can only manufacture tar and not play it will not be able to put it into working condition. He will be able to put all the parts in place, but he won't be able to properly tune in the instrument. Zahid says tourists are interested in watching the process of tar making. Sometimes master is asked to play it. Some even buy the instrument for themselves, especially visitors from Turkic-speaking countries. But almost everyone purchases souvenir tars in memory of Azerbaijan. It is said that the most beautiful clothes are national clothes. In the old age, masters made clothes suitable for the household, taste and convenience of the people.
designer Muldur Aldejarova draws inspiration from the traditions of her people. Taking as a basis its rich heritage, she began to create modern stylish outfits. Мен топтамам қорқытып қобыз деп атады қысқаша. Себебі өзім My collection is called Qurqat Qobas because I am from Qazilarda. I decided to name my collection in honor of the people from my small homeland. My collection is based on the Qurqatata precepts, which are familiar to the entire Turkic world. I think designers know it well that any collection is based on a certain concept. That is, you create a collection based on certain principles. I used the philosophy of Qurqadata and model of the Qubus while I was creating my fashion line. When modeling clothes, I take as a basis the shape of a Qubus and its quality. Whether the girl is slim or voluptuous, everyone can wear such clothes, because I use oversized style in my collection. Muldur also drew ideas for the basic components of her collection from the steppe culture. For example, the warrior's clothing used to be designed so that the rider would be comfortable while riding the horse. Therefore, this rope was divided in two parts, top and bottom. Thus, there was an option for the first trousers. Now Muldera is experimenting, for example, combines silk, felt, velvet and leather and harmoniously combines chapon with skirts and dresses. In ancient times, Kazakhs, like other nomadic peoples, used wool and leather to make casual clothing. The goal of the young designer today is to recreate and preserve all traditions. For example, leather. Why do I use this material? Because our ancestors used leather for centuries. For example, they made boots with felt, stockings that served for a long time. So to speak, a spiritual rebirth has now begun. Leather is like a golden bridge linking ancient times to the modern world. So for me, leather is something sacred, special. So I often use it. In recent years, modern girls have changed their preferences in clothing, Molder says. The demand for national outfits is increasing. Ethno style is noticeable even in the collections of world brands. The eco design was also in demand. The young fashion designer aims to create not only bright and beautiful clothes, but also eco-friendly. Now I'm thinking on how to create a material that could protect against harmful sunlight. It's my main dream right now.